um, saying that he thinks we live on a heliocentric world and wants to have a respectful conversation about it. And uh, I looked at your Facebook page. It looks like you're a big fan of the James Webb telescope. Yep. Okay. <laughs> I've got a very interesting video coming out on that shortly. Okay. And um, where do you want to start? Well, I mean, honestly, I got motivated to do this just a spur of the moment. I, I was seeing, uh, I was watching a little bit of your podcast, and then I was also, you know, I, I follow both sides a lot. Um, but I also see, you know, of course, the Simon Dan stuff and Professor Dave stuff. And I hated how they treated you on that uh, freaking video they did three months ago, just like making yeah. you a laughing stock. I'm like, that's not how to talk about any of this. Like, you well, because he's not, a real, he's not a real professor. If he was a real professor, yeah, well, he'd too. have respect. Yeah, that's um, it. But yeah, it's just, I don't know. It's just, uh, even if, like, it, it, wh whether someone's right or wrong, that's not going to ever give you an excuse to you know, treat them like, like crap. So I was just well, like, when, like, when you, when you don't have any evidence for what you're talking about, the only thing you can do is mock the other side and make funny faces and say, I don't understand when you're, when someone's trying to discuss to describe to you a perfectly simple concept that blows their argument away. No, uh. When I'm making my points and stuff, I might be using some tools that, you know, I, I understand there's an issue with authority here. That's probably one of the main issues is an issue of authority of who we're trusting, the sources that we're trusting. Um, obviously, you guys don't trust NASA. You know, I don't. I mean, if know. they put out something that was real, we <laughs> might trust them. Sure. Yeah. So anyway, have you seen this James Webb image? I mean, this is. Yes. Yeah, I've seen that one. You've seen this one. How about yeah. this one? Have you seen have you seen this one? Uh, well, aren't these all just from their uh, they're basic, like they're basically their log of uh, all their calibration images. No, I made these on a little app on my phone. It took me two and a half minutes. Oh, okay. okay? Well, they would look. So what, what I'm saying is, what, what I'm saying is, uh, my pictures look better than James Webb. You can still see. So, what do you think that is? So it's an emission. It's an. It's a, I think it's an, an emission nebula. So this this region of space that's full of gas, that's. Basically but let, let's pretend did. like you, you, the uh, the indoctrination camps didn't and, and the uh, space magazines didn't teach you all of this information of, of what these things in the sky are. What if you just walked outside right now with no basic recollective information of what what any of these lights are? You just you know it's beautiful, but you're like I don't know what any of this is. And then you saw this. What what, what do you th what would you think it was if you were never told any stories or any, given any names or any um, because you know. They've attacked your brain for so long with this stuff, it becomes like it's permanent to you. It's that's what it is, but that's something someone created. That's something that someone made up and presented it to you. And this is what it's called. And then they go into the real deep CGI images of this shit when they're trying to pretend like they're gonna expand it for you. And they're like, that's all composite. But the, you know, these like, hey, I just wanna know, like, do you understand what I'm trying to say though? Like, well, yeah, right. so you're, you're talking about if, if I was just out there personally w w subtracting whitewashing everything else that right. you know that we purport to know about space um yep. what i would think these certain things are yeah uh i mean i'm not i'm not sure what i would think uh, that's why you know and that, that's why we've had guys through through history ask probably asking the same thing that's kind of like how science starts is that we're asking what are these things how is this stuff working mm -hmm. and we've we've you had see, a long string of people asking these questions that, you see the image i'm showing right now yes is this a nasa image or is it something that i made while you were talking in the last three in two minutes i i don't know i've never okay seen good answer good answer yeah. That's but crazy. if NASA told you this was the the CSMAX uh, Nebula 4205 in the in the so and so region of space, you would believe it. Well, I well, uh, you probably would I, though. I, you probably would. Right? I probably, probably have would. to admit yes, that I probably you would believe it. Okay, but what but is there's... the difference between this image and what you just showed me? I think what, mine's what? better. I think mine's more believable. So what your brain's doing to you is saying uh, it, it, it's coming up with that word already, the nebula or the this or these space words that we grew up with and, and other people, adults you know, are still about it and, and showing it and teaching classes about it. We All three of us can create a class and, um, you know, w with information. It could be false information. 
and we could teach our our our, uh, our students this for centuries it, but the, the information they're teaching is false it doesn't matter you can get an a on your test and feel good about your your exam on on all this stuff it, but it, it's it's based off of lies is what we're saying so uh, when you so actually I, look up in the sky and see these lights in the sky that's all we know joel they're lights in the sky we can't touch them we can't get there but you know what when when uh, modern day optics now the p900 p1000 cameras are zooming in on these we're not we're not seeing uh what, what you see apparently apparently we all have different camcorders flat earthers have camcorders when we're zooming in with the optics that are uh, able to let you zoom in that far so if i can zoom in on a, on a on a hotel 80 miles away and see a window boom i'm maxed out zoom i can't go anymore i'll go in more i can't i'm maxed out the the it's a great camera but only goes that far and then i do the same thing going up joel I, those dots in the sky that you're praising are you know probably trillions of light years away those dots in the sky would remain dots in the sky as i'm zooming in <laughs> with the camcorder man this nikon 1000 i zoom in those little dots as i'm zooming on the sky should remain that size but they're growing in size and you can start seeing details on 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 where these things are yeah. some of them are out of focus and some of them are in focus but it's the point use your common sense here those little dots in the sky would remain that size as you're zooming that they're yeah. so far away but they're getting they're growing in size and, and clarity as you're looking in dude that's not that far away at all that would never be able to happen whether it's out of focus or not that can't happen you just got to use your use your common sense you know, i had access to an observatory all through college used it and um we're seeing nothing that you know uh, when i saw saturn i'm like oh there's saturn right it's a light it's not it's not the distances that they're telling us and and i use the that you know what a lot of times we use the telescope to zoom into the girls dormitories across campus okay <laughs> and it could only go so far but then all of a sudden i can see you know deep into space millions and millions of miles i don't i'm not buying it, yeah, not buying same, it and i'm saying the same thing with the p1000 if it and that thing's a great piece of technology and it goes extremely far and you can see extremely clear detailed stuff on ground i'm saying and of course sure. we're looking through way more opaque just funk everywhere in the distance but the point is is that we're looking up with less of that but I, I'm just trying to figure out how those dots in the sky are growing in size as we're zooming in. If those, so, if they're so far away that our, our own eyes, we're looking at it, that's trillions of miles away. Well, that should stay that, remain that way. Or if you're just distorting it and making it bigger, it would just blur, completely blur. I've seen videos of them zooming in on these lights in the sky. They all look different. They all had the, the, their own colors, their own little shapes and weird. It looks like something like a, a frequency vibration sure. with water. And, and you could reproduce this in your own kitchen. You take a, a bowl uh, of water or something, a glass, something see-through and turn all the lights off and, and put a, a a bright LED light underneath, you'll look at your ceiling, you'll see the same thing that we're seeing when we zoom in. This, sure. this on Dave's screen, you'll see that effect and other effects like these other stars that we've zoomed in on. And you will and be you able to see, see the this same with, thing. You, that's you all, that's real science. Naked eye. Yeah. You can see this with your naked exactly. eye. That too. Yeah. So I'm trying to draw a diagram. Yeah, but think, think about what Dave just said. If you look, you can see it. the naked eye is the upper right thumbnail. You could see that with your naked eye. You zoom in, it gets it gets bigger. You see a little more detail. How can we see these things with our naked eye at, at the distances they are? I know they yeah. sold you on because they're giant things. It's like, no, man. If you actually and look up in the sky, most things are the same size. But they're supposed to be light, trillions of miles right. farther apart from one another. And that light is spreading out. Lasers even yeah. spread out. Okay? Right? So when it spreads out, what is it? Multiplying its brightness? Light no, doesn't so, travel so, for thousands of miles. So what's let happening? Let alone billions right? of light years. So this is what's going on. So let's say we have, it's not going to come up. <laughs> so, well, there's a couple points there, but I think the biggest thing, you know, since if we want to talk about math, I think it's a good, robust thing that we can all reference. We can all work out for ourselves, which the biggest thing with, with looking at distant objects is again, going to be the magnitude of the brightness. Now, when I saw that needle galaxy, it was super, 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 super faint. So it was about like this 
but oh like, they love you... faint thing when you when we when us in the world can go outside and see faint things nasa they all love well, that shit. they uh, love it because they're like oh let's enhance it to be this fantasy that you could defend because you know so, you're not going to give it up if 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 you like this type of stuff until so, you know but, what it is i'm not talking about nasa though okay I'm no, gonna, no, i understand i'm just making I, a the point only the only time i'm going to reference nasa would be i was just going to say the only time i reference something from nasa is nasa's eyes which is a software that i think can help explain my perspective on why these things work specifically orbital mecha mechanics and i wanted to address the numbers that we're talking about here with orbital speed rotational velocity angular velocity all of this kind of stuff i think that's where the biggest misunderstanding is and i understand the misunderstanding i can uh, i understand why it sounds counterintuitive when you initially ask the question um wait but back uh, up how, why, why would you want to resource nasa that's the space agency for i mean it's like the number one space agency in, in the world that of of heliocentrism why would why would you not well, want to be like look what nasa said why you don't well, trust them because trust I, was, I was i was gonna try to show you guys how it lined up with with no but i'm asking you do you not trust them or you do trust nasa you, no you i do, do trust but, them. but but for, okay for, let's use them then Sure. And I was just saying for the case of the discussion, I'm not going to fully rely on them because I know that you got, they're not a trusted authority by you guys. So it's not going to you're not going to accept Joel, as much. As Joel, let me ask you a question, Joel. Okay. Let, let me ask you a question. If, if I could show you that NASA is faking crap, can we rule them out for anything else that they show you? Can we just wipe out everything? Like if I can show you I, them lying, if faking I were to space. be fully, fully honest, I don't know if I could say that. It just because. Okay, but, but, oh, what do you mean? If they're caught in a lie once, if you see with your own eyes that they're lying and they've lied to you, and we can prove that based off of not what we did, what they've done. That is the magic of engineering. I would wear a mask on my face in a nanosecond, but we, unfortunately we lost the technology. It can take days, even weeks, to produce just a single image. The dazzling final results, enough to keep us all dreaming. The stuff they've actually released and we've You're caught. They're still going to believe it. You're still going to believe it? Are you one that? of the guys, well, you, went, you believe we went to the moon, right? If one of the astronauts oh, that went to the moon oh, got on a press conference and said out of nowhere, he goes, we faked it. We never went to the moon. It was filmed in a studio. We did it against our will, whatever. You'd probably still believe we went to the moon. <laughs> I got to. Right? I got I to gotta say, to I, I, I'd like to deviate from the moon thing. I think that that's Let, a, that's and a, let's that's let's, a let's soon get out of the sky and get down to the earth with the thing. Yeah, that I'm, we I'm waiting to talk measure. about the earth. You, you guys sure. want to yeah, look yeah, at no, pretty no, lights I, in the I sky. Just, I just, you know, it's a big part of why I have accepted the. I get it, but pretty lights in the sky, brother, does not prove your lack of curvature. There is none. So okay, well, you know. so we, with that, right, let's talk about the the speed thing. Okay, the. Okay. <laughs> always remember six 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 with NASA. You should always remember that six sixty six thousand six hundred. Okay. Well, not 665 or 664 or 66291 or, you know, random speed 666. Just so you know, because you're Christian, I just wanted to remind you, but go ahead. Okay. Well, so you guys were asking how, uh, I guess, one of the biggest questions do you guys agree with the question, how are we spinning at a thousand miles per hour and not feeling like diddly squat? Is that an agreeable? fair question that you guys are curious about i think i asked that to myself in like maybe fifth grade but okay sure. and it, and I just, it makes more sense a, that it is a reasonable moving, so, yeah. it's a reasonable question yeah. and i'm curious of your guys's reactions on the the answers that could be given through physics through mathematics okay he's showing the okay i'm kind of glad you're showing the clip yeah me too this is this is where i'm going to pull the nasa thing in um so we have this. 
Because you're showing that, and that's not what I believe, by the way. Well, that's what this, mainstream tells us is happening. You can't this, pick your battles with the this, lies, man. This is what's happening. This is live, or, or you know, not, not live footage, but live <laughs> tracking. Live tracking of what this actually would look like, okay? So we can we could go here. Uh, where is Earth? You can. You're in a video game, you know. Oh, it's a simulation, but you can. A video you, game. You could you could line this. I've used this to line up to look at the stars before. So here we have all the satellites and everything. I kind of don't want any of that. Yes, it's a it's a video game, but it's tracking in real time. Okay, so if you were to, for example, look at the where the planets are located, over, all on a flat plane. Okay, sure. But Above over in this Earth. direction, we have back here, we got Mars, Uranus, Jupiter, Neptune. And I was just looking at Neptune and Jupiter and Saturn in the same spot in the sky, okay? But this is the speed at which uh, this model purports that we're moving in. Okay, so on this scale of, of what we're talking about, this is how fast the Earth is rotating, okay? So it's not like that video that you're showing there. I think that, that did a horrible disservice to anybody who believes the earth is a globe um this right, is what wait, it so, actually so would you're, look you're like. saying this this is what it would look like at that at that scale but have you ever been on a merry-go-round a merry-go-round with the horses of course you yes. have right as a child yes. okay yes. so imagine you're on a merry-go-round that spins around once every 24 hours you wouldn't even know it's moving right Right. It would be, you would, it would be hard to tell that it's moving. Now right. let's expand that merry-go-round out to 24 miles in circumference. Okay. Well, now you're moving at a mile per hour. Not bad. There's really not much outward force. Now let's span it to 2400 miles per hour. Now it's going 100 miles per hour. You're on that outside miles. horse. Yeah. 2400 miles, mm -hmm. 2400 miles. You're going a hundred miles an hour in a curved tra trajectory, okay? You're curving at a hundred miles per hour mm -hmm. in a big ass circle. Now yeah. expand it to 24,000 miles an hour. You're going faster than the speed of sound in a curved directory, uh, tra tra trajectory. Sure. And any change in trajectory, you will feel as acceleration. So imagine two, two astronauts in space, right? There's nothing else. It's just two well, astronauts. Well, you'd have to imagine that. <laughs> okay. All right. Yeah, you, so, got any, uh, you got any uh, footage of that? I'd like to see that. Okay, yeah. So you have one astronaut. Let's say you're one of the astronauts and, and you know, your friend is coming at you and you pass each other, right? Now you have to ask the question, which one is moving? Okay, which one's... So what, you, how would you answer that? I'm curious. Depends on which green screen guy is operating no, which no, no, camera. Okay. Which camera? Just, no oh, astronaut. Okay, you're just floating in space. How would you answer which one is moving past the other one? It, it's a, it, it's, a, it, the space doesn't, we don't believe space exists. So you're asking a question yeah. about Narnia. Prove how fast okay. Santa rides his sleigh, bro. Okay, well, it's a right. hypothetical. It's a hypothetical to, dis, to, to, to make. Well, then uh, there's no right here. answer. Everything you're talking about is a hypothetical. If that no. galaxy behind you was um, X distance away, could we see it? And the answer is no. But somehow you still haven't addressed how we can see Polaris. How can we see Polaris? The, the magnitude of, of brightness. But okay. So so wait. wait so <laughs> the mag. But you haven't done the math. The magnitude of brightness well, is. Okay. I mean, is be can you imagine the sun? 64 times brighter than we see it. You can't even imagine it twice the brightness because you've never seen anything that bright. But you're imagining Polaris is a hundred quadrillion billion trillion times brighter than the sun in order for us to see it. Not not necessarily. Um, but not let's, necessarily. Let's go back, let's go back to, because because we need, no, not necessarily. Because let's go back to, let's just stick to the, to just the because, speed question. Just because. Right? They've That's never proven that. how far the sun was. They also have changed the distances many, many times over the years. I, I, at some point, it was one million miles away, and then it went, and it also got up to a hundred, over a hundred and ten million miles away, I believe. And they brought it back to ninety-three. It's like, come on. I mean, and first after, of all, they can't prove after, how they came up with that, but they keep changing it like it's nothing. That's why he's saying, what if tomorrow they go, hey, by the way, the sun's now one hundred and fifty-two million miles away. You're just gonna be like, oh, okay, oh, okay. Well, what do you uh, mean, okay? That 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 specific issue would be because the Earth isn't a per, isn't in a perfect circular orbit. It's an elliptical orbit, slightly, by a little bit. 
I don't um, understand what you're saying. So you're saying okay. it went from 1 million miles away to 60, I think was the next one, like this, and it was because of something I'm, that's happening a, a, above us? I'm not sure that oh. that's, that's necessarily accurate i mean i haven't i haven't heard the, the what you're talking about copernicus calculated the sun's distance from earth to be three million three hundred and ninety one thousand two hundred miles the next century johannes kepler decided it was actually twelve million three hundred and seventy six thousand eight hundred miles away isaac newton once said it matters not whether we reckon it 28 or 54 million miles distant for either would do just as well how scientific Science, Benjamin science, Martin science, calculated science. between 81 and 82 million miles. Just three bodies, and it goes into absolute insanity chaos mode, and no computer can figure out what it's going to do next. Well, how is it that we have a solar system with eight or nine planets, tons of moons, asteroids, uh, um, you know, comets and stuff that always follow an exact path? How is it possible in this beehive crazy, gravitationally run um, solar system galaxy that we have eclipses in patterns that repeat themselves every 18 years like clockwork so how is that possible um i guess the one word answer of that would be mass um so you, you have mass, to look at that's the, a word that's not okay. an answer it's a word okay so the answer the full answer is because i mean at least in that simulation you sort of showed it looks like those are talking about pretty much the same mass of objects like those all, all no three it doesn't those matter big mass little mass all the well, same masses well three bodies together I, going okay. in in orbits they will they will re I, go into random chaos mode I and need, science can't figure it out well okay no again like you, you you said like mass doesn't matter, but that's like the main thing that matters. Is, is no, I'm not saying mass doesn't matter. I'm saying they could all be the same mass. They could all be different masses. Two of them could be well, the same. But, One of but, them could be slightly different. It doesn't matter if you have three gravitational objects going, this happens, right? Okay. This doesn't look like our solar system. I Okay, I understand, I really do. But I'm trying to say that mass is the main determining factor Bye -bye. in orbital Go ahead. Okay. And I'm just saying, look what happened. The whole thing just goes okay. away. Yeah. We had we had planetary alignments this year. Yes. Like how I, I saw come, them. I was out there looking yeah. at them. And, and so how come they didn't I, nudge things? I'm, I'm trying to explain. It's, no. it's, so the more mass there is, that is going to affect, if you have more or less mass, is going to affect how different uh, op celestial objects interact with each other. So if Where, all, Where'd you all, learn that? Well, this is this is this is math stuff. I mean, I could explain the math. With no, that's it. what I mean. I mean, how did you learn? I mean, where did you, where did you learn this stuff? Where did you learn? I mean, ex explain how the three body problem is solved in our solar system. M mass. That that's mass. That's, it's it's, it's, it's a word. It's the main determining factor. Of... Physics. Physics also. Yes. Well, it's, math that's... and physics. There, it's explained. Math and physics. Two yes. words. I, and I, I think I think we can all agree that math and physics are pretty rigorous. Uh, process. I, I can. Can you tell me the math and physics that show how the three-body problem resolves itself in our solar system? Here, I'll show you some examples. Oh, it's not going to You can't show us anything. Okay. This is all... Well, this is this is how we describe curvature of space-time, okay? So the more mass an object has, you guys have seen the diagrams, the more it warps the space-time around it, okay? So this is this is math. So wait, you're 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 a believer in the bending of space time and not gravitational. You're you're a, a Newtonian. I mean, Einsteinian gravitational model, not Newtonian. When did you switch? They're okay. Well, the, first of all, they're not two separate things. One sort of supplemented the other and helped it it progress the other one. They're they're an addition to each other. Okay. Uh, yeah, so, an enhanced lie. Yeah, you're right. So so okay. just a quick question I, I, on the bending I, I, of space time. Why does it calling... bend it? I have a Why does it bend with in one direction? Concepts a lie, okay? Because math, the, the, there's no agenda or yeah. No, if it's based math. off a lie, the math is bullshit. Yeah. What do you mean? Let me ask you a question. No. Okay. Here's some simple math for you. you. Simple math for you. Simple okay. math for you. You have a million dollars in the bank, and I'm going to double it every day for two for three days. Tomorrow okay. you have two million. And how much do you have the next day? Four. Are you talking four about million. Financial growth. So you have four million dollars in the bank. Math proves it. Math proves it, that you have $4 million in the bank in two days from now. Can I okay? see the evidence of that? What's, yeah, the problem <laughs> oh. is you have you have bad data going into it, yeah. okay? 
They figured out the distance of the sun because one day Venus, which is about the same size as Earth, transited the sun. And someone on the East Coast and the West Coast saw it start and stop at different times. And they did some really good math to figure out the sun was 93 million miles away. The problem is, you got some bad data. They said Venus is the same size as Earth. I think be, be, Venus is about the size of one of those yoga balls, okay? Okay, but I still, I, I, I'm trying to, yes, I believe in Einsteinian, the you know theory of general relativity. I think it's our best understanding so far. I think it can still get better. It can always get better. And just because something has an issue doesn't mean that it, the, the things what it explains and predicts is incorrect okay so so i answered this problem of the three body problem the answer to that you, you, well, you no, answered it was math and physics no no, no the, and I then answered, you showed me a bunch of scribble on the paper of equations oh, I'm just, I'm trying, but you I'm didn't to explain how it works i was okay i can explain how it works the more mass uh, well let's do the trampoline example because i'm sure you guys have seen that with general relativity uh, right examples you know you put the bowling ball in the middle of the trampoline and, and why it, does the trampoline go down and not up or sideways it, okay oh this is where I, I need to you need to start thinking above two dimensions because that that uh example, three dimensions i'll go to four dimensions if you want why does the trampoline go down in what why does it go in one direction and not this way or that way or that way or that way Okay, uh, well, let me, uh, well, and that answer is due to gravity, but that's because of the inertial reference. But wouldn't but, the gravity pull that trampoline, like from, it would, would, would create like a web around it because it would have yes. bending trampolines at every possible angle. Do you guys, are you guys aware of the formula for like an orbit of, of the gravitational pull on two bodies? You guys know what that equation is? I do not know how Santa built his sleigh, bro. I don't okay. know. I'll be honest. The equation, the, the, but the, this is why math is important because it helps you understand how this works, right? So the equation is uh, the, the force of gravity equals the gravitational constant. I won't get into how we got that because it's a little more complicated. But And then you have the first mass and the second physics mass. Physics and, and physics, sure. and, physics and, and math. math. You have the first yeah. mass, let's say it's the Earth, and the second mass, let's say it's the moon, and then divided by the radius squared. Okay. The so, radius. How did you go? Hold on. How'd you get the radius of the earth? Okay. The radius. No, no, how'd you, no, no, no. Hold how'd on. you get yeah, the radius no, of the earth? That's a valid question. Okay. You know, well, we don't know all, oh, by the way, if you don't know the radius of the earth, we don't know the distances or sizes of any of the planets. I how agree. did you get the radius of the earth? Hold on. Because the radius isn't describing the radius of the earth. It's describing the distance between those two objects. So if you have the earth here and the moon going around. Well, it, how do you know the distance the between the two objects if you don't know the radius of the earth? Oh, okay. That's a that's a totally separate question. I'm trying I'm trying to just stick. But with... but that question needs to be answered before you can figure out the distances to anywhere else. You Actually, need to okay. know the radius of the Earth. How did you figure all that out? Well, th for yourself, is... like how did you how did you come up with that conclusion on your on for yourself? Like what what did you have to do? Did you just read something or what did like how did you come up with this? Well, uh, well, school first. Oh, um, okay. So you know, well, somebody well, told can... you. No, okay, I, I did well, the math. Was it in a hey, textbook? Joel, did C Christopher Columbus uh, discover America, in your opinion? Because school said no. That. Oh, okay. Not. I just I just wanted to know your opinion no, on school, did. but okay. Okay. And how hold old on, were you I, when they taught you this stuff? Okay, hold on, because they're te they, some. I, I don't agree with a lot of the things that school teaches. I don't even like the school system, so we probably but, agree there. Good start there. You know, I Take went that. to the Air. I went to the Air Force Academy. You know, <laughs> I I've had quite you know, the experience with education. I went to three different colleges and I don't have my degree. So I've done a lot of my own independent research. This isn't stuff that I was just brainwashed to believe. I've done the math myself and you can do well, the math yourself. No, no, and, again, uh, you yeah. you can do math, and yeah. but if you're based on things that other people are telling you that are unmeasurable. Here's a little experiment we did. We got helium balloons. They're holding this wire in the air. There's a button on the end and it's just neutrally buoying off the ground. This wire goes to a Van der Graaff generator and we're gonna crank a negative charge into that pin. And when we crank a negative charge into it, it goes down. Negative charge, oh, positive, I'm sorry, positive charge. Positive charge, ground is negative, okay? Positive okay. charge, it gets heavier. Did gravity just increase or did the electrostatic pull of the earth just increase okay I, and then when we discharge it it goes back up right and now we can do we can do the opposite we can put a negative charge into something and even though it rises up off the earth when we put a negative charge into it 
it stays in it because we're still charging it and it goes up. Is it defying gravity or is it defying an electrostatic force? Yes, <laughs> it's doing both. The electrostatic force is overcoming the force of gravity in that instance. But so, but my question is, things go down because of buoyancy and density. Down is down because, in my opinion, because of the electrostatic force. The electrostatic force is magnitudes more stronger than the theory of gravity, which needs 90 plus percent dark matter and dark energy to make that it work, exist, yeah. right? To, <laughs> to make the math work, where they'd have to make it up. Normally in science, when you come up with a theory, if it doesn't work, you don't make up crap to make it work. You throw the theory out and you start over. But the electrostatic force is testable. Okay, how, let's pretend gravity's real, and that's really pretending. How do you di differentiate the electrostatic charge uh, effect? When I could show you that when I change the electrostatic um, nature or something, it, it, it does the opposite. Okay, uh, well, I guess there's a couple things there. Um, first- there, there are. Yeah, okay, the first thing is gravity is described as a force, but it's not really like a, in the sense of like, I have this, my levitating light moon lamp here, right? And it's like just moving above, you know, there's nothing under it. It's just floating. Magnetism. And spinning. Yeah, magnetism. Right. Okay. So that's an actual force that we can measure and use. The only two forces that can be measured are magnetism and electricity. electricity. The electric okay. force and the magnetic force. The so gravitational what? force is made up. What happened? Okay, well, you're not completely wrong. Okay, so what what gravity is is like the uh, like a, a centrifugal acceleration, right? It feels like there's a force, but it, there's actually not. It's just a result of the motion. Okay, so what gravity is is a result of the curvature. So it's not an actual force in the sense of like magnetism or like you pushing on something. It's Joel, not. Joel, you know, the gravity was was created just to protect the ball theory because without it i mean is australia upside down right now without gravity they'd fall off right so yeah the gravity they had to come up with something that's their false god that is what they preach and that is what has led most people to this state of mind of indoctrination well okay because i could well, I look man when you were little they could have told you that it was you know uh magical fairy tale rainbows that held the ball in place and you know in kindergarten and first grade you just would have accepted it uh and and we all know we can't verify these stories especially that's why they had to teach you that at that age because you have no concept of what they're talking about in any sense of the fashion so these are made up things so it, again it's and i don't want to disrespect you but when, when i'm talking to people about stuff like this and you're so far this way it's like it, again it's like talking to someone about if the tooth fairy is is real or not real like it, that's how i feel and i i don't want to come off that way but no no i, I don't think you are i okay. just i i'd like an like an opportunity to have this stuff because because a lot of this stuff can be explained um and yeah from there that. listen it could be explained based off of what you read that uh, from the people that don't give a shit about you or me or dave so you're you're representing people that are not in your, your best interest to, to represent man these are not good people you're, that have come up with this, I, this thing so right. the, but the, the explanations the, are, are something that you can do yourself i guess is my point really but okay you, yes. so you can be the first show us yeah. show, please show us one because show us proof of, I, of, I have, of of earth moving i just want let's start there can we can we get a science test going to prove the earth's moving uh because it's never been done i mean you'd be literally you'd be a nobel prize winning i mean you'd be all over the place you'd, you'd have your own netflix special brother if you came up with the you'd be the first person to do that are you, so, are you familiar with the georgia guidestones yes yes i am all right and, and you know they were knocked down right i uh, i did yeah i saw that yeah, but you know about the hole in the Georgia Guides? I guess. Yeah, I did. So that hole lines up with Polaris, uh -huh. and it's been up for over 40 years. And the story is, even though we're traveling four and a half billion miles a year, Polaris is so far away that there's no parallax. That's ridiculous, but let's go with it. But we're also processing. We had uh, our North Star changes, uh, you know, it was 2,000 years ago. It was Thuban or whatever. And... Um, well, it would have moved at the rate of procession more than a half a degree, and it would knock it way out of that hole. A half a degree would be way out of that hole, and it wasn't. It never moved out of that hole. Now, I find it quite a coincidence that at the time where this absolutely proves that we're not moving, it gets knocked down, okay? Okay, we were talking Math. about before. 
physics, science, right here. Not, a, not exactly. I mean, if, <laughs> if, if you if you can tell me mathematically how this stuff doesn't make sense, I Joe, it's a perfect okay. clock, right. brother. Look look at this. Yeah. It's a perfect clock in the sky. We're, how we're is that? moving. We're corkscrewing through space in four different directions at once, but Polaris never moves from that hole. I'd like you to tell me the math that explains how it never moves from that hole. Yeah. So the first, so the okay, so the first thing is scale, right? So again, you you there's these 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 big, vast distances that we're talking about. So when you we we, we uh, what's what's the do you guys know what the formula you mean, wait, for? Do you mean the di the distances where we've proven that we can't see Polaris? Okay, go ahead. Okay. So now we're de dealing with a fictitious distance that we could not see Polaris. The brightness and the size mm -hmm. is is um, hundreds of millions of times beyond what we could see. And so now that's going to be. But your Dave, proof this is what they taught us. So it has to be true. I know they, they, they taught it to us. It has to give right. us. It's got to be real. The, right. the the science and the physics say that we can't see Polaris. So why are we even arguing about they, how we see it through this all? Okay, because we you haven't shown how the magnitude of the brightness wouldn't be seen by us. Okay. And Do you agree start, that every time you that you half the David, distance to a light, it's four times as bright? Just, just let me ask you that. Do you believe in the inverse square law of light? Yes. You've never seen anything brighter than the sun. If I said the better than the sun twice as bright, you'd probably melt. Oh, Sixty right. times as bright. That's how much how bright it would have to be at a hundred miles away from the moon. Right? Okay. Short circuit. Well, and and you stop thinking about it. Not you, everybody. No, no that's what I happens is people I, memorize these uh, equations. They memorize them, regurgitate them, get a B. Now they want an A, and they're they. they it's like but, it becomes. Listen though, it becomes concrete in your we'll, veins. We'll let you finish, y'all. We'll let you finish. Yeah, my bad. I I barely spoke, yeah, yeah. man. But it I it just, becomes concrete in your vein because of the regurgitation and the testing and the studying of garbage. Anyone but, could come up with any story, any theory, anything back it up with math because you're creating the formulas and you're creating the answers based off of bullshit so what you do joel is you read all this stuff and you're all and i'm not judging but you're, you're all involved in the space stuff and it's so cool and everything me and dave used to be like that man like it, it's it's i used to be like that it's cool like you know what i mean like we're different now but we understand where you're coming from but you don't understand that you've been programmed and once you can understand you've been programmed and you can start unprogramming little things from your head and looking at looking at it from a different perspective. So you look at what we're talking about in your own your, your same perspective of what you were brainwashed to believe. You don't see it with our eyes. We've seen it with your eyes where you're coming from. We've been there. You so cannot one understand more it from our eyes. That's what sucks. Uh, let's talk about curvature. OK, Do you believe that the Earth has curvature. I do. Yeah. OK, so. If this is the Earth and uh, the ship or a building goes farther away, it goes behind that curvature and zooming in doesn't bring it back because we have a physical curvature. So uh -huh. you agree that the Earth needs a physical curvature? Yes. Yeah. What proof do you have? What observation do you have that shows things going over the curve of the Earth? And, and if I showed you that we could see things that should be far below the curve, but we could see them, what other excuse do you have other than refraction, which won't work, um, that we can see them? For example, let me show you one example. This is a viewing spot in Illusion, France, and we're looking out as the sun's setting, and out here is Mount Canigou, but you can't see it because it's 175 miles away. Using the Earth Curve Calculator, at that altitude and that distance, the very top of Mount Canigou should be over a mile or a half a mile to a mile below the curvature. I forget the exact number, but it should be far below the horizon. But our sun, I mean, our, 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 our sun migrates in between the tropics, right? So if my head's the earth, every year it passes in line with this viewing spot and it lines up. And when it does, the sun is so bright, its light can push to us, but the light bouncing off of Mount Canigou can't make it to our eyes because the air is too thick. But when the sun backlights it, all of a sudden you can see Mount Canigou in all of its glory. The very, very top of Mount Canigou right here should be a half a mile or a mile below the curvature of the earth, but we can see it. And then with our infrared, we have a channel called J. Tolan Media, or if you check out Sean's film, 
uh, the the next level 2020.com. 2022. Um, 2022, sorry. 2022.com. Yeah. Um, there's uh, Jay Tolan is in there. He uses a uh, infrared camera and he can see things that would make the earth have to be a thousand times bigger than they tell us. At and least there's a still thousand problems. times bigger. At least a thousand. At least a thousand. But, but if the earth was a thousand times bigger and still a globe, we'd still have a lot of problems. We still yeah. have like, okay, they're lying, right? They tell us there's eight continents. Well, maybe there's 8,000 continents, okay? So I guess my question with that, if you're asking for an explanation is how high is that mountain? Well, yes, we, we calculate in the earth um, calculator. The, by the way, the eight inches per mile squared um, is actually better than the three other formulas that they use because it gives the globe a little extra favor. It's <laughs> actually less curvature than the than the more complicated um, formulas. And and by the way, it only works up to you know between 500 and 1,000 miles. Thousand it it miles. gets off a little bit. Like at 1,000 miles, I think it's off by I guess by I, I by, guess by an insignificant amount. The thing, the an thing insignificant with, amount. But the thing is, you can never see that far. The, the, you can never well, see thing, that, that the far. The thing with curvature cal calculation in that specific instance is you're calculating, you know, you got the your altitude, your viewing altitude of what you're looking the at. The higher you go, the less curvature there is. We calculate the height of the observer every single time. Okay. Every single and time. And that's good. But did, did it take into account the top altitude of the mountain as well? Of course. The top of the mountain should be a half a mile or more below the curvature according to that altitude yeah according yeah. to their yeah. globe math a spherical we use, math we use we, you love math we say yeah. observer height um view the object we're looking at height and distance and it'll tell you how much curvature there is okay yeah. okay and, and, and it's been and destroyed the over it. This is one. This is over one over. out of thousands. Right. So the, the curvature, the curvature of the Earth changes in different areas. It's flatter in some areas. Well, it isn't. It's not a perfect sphere. First of it's all, it's an oblate spheroid. Right. Okay. Yeah, they changed but, the narrative but, on that a few years ago. It's an oblate spheroid now. Even though okay. NASA took perfect images of perfect spheres, no one gives a shit about that. But go ahead with your pair. Well, I, it's. You can, you should sort of see it's, it's the, the shape of it in, even in the images. You can sort of see clone copies of clouds in cartoon effects in Photoshop. I've been doing Photoshop since I was like 15 years old, 14 years old. Dude, the, none of those images are real. NASA will admit that. You can go to NASA.gov well, and look at all their cartoons, brother. Why would they give you cartoons, Joel? Why? There's not yeah, one so, reason to do it, man. You go up so there, we you take some pictures. Me and Dave wouldn't even exist. But they've never done it, Joel, and they never can. It doesn't exist, brother. That's why they don't take real photos, videos. They don't do a 360 turn in space because it's all bullshit. Take your camera and turn around and look around and do stuff. What would you do if you were up there in, the, in a full with full camcorders? What, how would you film it? It's never Joel, been what done. If you that and way. I, what if you and I were the first two guys to land on the moon? Yeah. What would the dialogue would be? You know what it would be? Okay, kids. You know, if if you have a problem with four letter words, leave the room. It would be, holy fucking shit, look at the earth. Oh my God, look, there's America. Oh my God, look at that hurricane. Yeah. Holy crap. Never once did the astronauts even mention the nope. earth. Nope. And there they was one mentioned. image Earth's they released it. of it. 8,000 re uh, images released of the of the studio set of the moon, right? Because right. yeah, they put a lot of money into that. Warner Von Braun, so, they got some big boys in there. But the Earth? No, that was just to reinforce we live on a ball. They already changed the schools in the 20s and the 30s. Rockefeller, they changed everything. So they had to reinforce it. Not a lot of people were, were a lot of people were fighting it at first. They don't want to teach it in school. Uh, teachers were getting uh, um, uh, pissed off and teachers that were teaching it in school were getting persecuted they didn't want this crap taught it was forced down their throat math is a description of whatever you want it to describe so if you're going to say i've got math that proves the shape the the the, the um, radius of the earth show me the math mm -hmm. i'd love to see okay it too. sure i mean like yeah. uh, we probably shouldn't do it now because we've gone quite quite long but i would be yeah. perfectly willing to come back on i could i can get uh, you know, because because I guess how it would go, right? It'd be like, okay, well, here's the equation for gravity. It goes off of the masses. Okay, well, how did you find out the mass? Okay, well, let's see how we find out the mass of the Earth. And, and then how do you find out, you know, this, this, and this, and that? So you have to obviously have work starting data to, and starting numbers to start math. Right? Sure. So, but Joel, once you can admit that all the information that you already have right now in your mind about all this stuff was given to you from someone else, 
then you can start from there because sure. none of that information, okay. even though you're repeating it in a sense of your defense, you're, you're like, you're, you've done some stuff and tests and equations and like, oh, it does equal that. Oh yeah. Yeah. You're invested your emotions into something that doesn't exist. So it's hard to kind of transcribe to you what to change or how to, if you actually are open-minded, a critical thinker, then, th then if, you'll find all this stuff out. But let me I'll, ask you one I'll question, just one okay. question okay. Did, did two on, on September 11th, and, and the event in New York. And I just want to okay. ask you one question. That's it. Just sure. one question. Do I need to know who I'm talking to here. Do you think two planes took down seven buildings? I just want to know your opinion. No, I don't. Okay, you, you don't. So that's a good I think thing. It was a, I think, think it was a demolition, controlled demolition. Oh, for sure, 100%. But yeah. that's a good thing. So you're a critical thinker. You just, this is a big one for you, Joel, because when you were little, maybe you believed in Santa, Tooth Fairy, uh, you know, maybe you didn't. I don't know how your family was, but we'll just, for the sake of the argument, we'll pretend you did. All these stories, right? We, and obviously, we laugh at them now. We're adults. But this is just the only story that you were never told wasn't true. So it's not that you're an adult and we think you're stupid for still believing in this shit. We don't because we used to be that same smart adult that you are, right? Until you, we understood that they're lying about it and we started proving these things to ourselves. We got out of it. But the point I'm trying to make is once you're actually in a, in a mindset to go, you know, let me look into this type of stuff. You need to close your, close your um, judgment of flat earth and close your understanding of what you were taught because you're not just defending something as an adult anymore you, you're a child in, in your mind with this ball this and is I when got, you were taught it and no one your parents might have said my point was your parents might have said hey santa's not real when you were six and maybe too fairy when you were five and so on and so forth right and you're like what what do you mean there's not real all that happens with kids no one told you the ball's not real so you're holding on to this like i just imagine you right now as a child just holding on to the globe you can't let it go because it, you don't want to and i feel like you don't want to and if you did want to you would because once you start dissecting the globe from A to Z and everything in between. What happened to me? It's go it's over. It's over. But you have to do it with not with with without the programming. We live here, and here are extraterrestrials on the extra terra outside of us, and more out here. These are yeah, other. Yeah, that's worlds. the outer space. They, that's the real outer space. They they put that's the, the real truth outer in, space. The, in the words. They know the and truth. So we live here in this pond, right? And then these are other worlds just thousands of miles away. Star not Wars is real, brother. Not, Star Wars is real. Un, and and there, there might be wars. There might be stuff, you know, territory disputes and all sorts of stuff going on. So the whole Star Wars thing works here on a physically still... possible flat Earth. Yeah. A scientifically impossible gas ball in a vacuum doesn't even, is not even possible. Right? You can't have a gas ball in a vacuum. So space, stop arguing about anything we see in space. It's scientifically impossible. This is scientifically possible. Mm -hmm. That's okay. all. And why you do you think the there's a treaty word. that won't let us go see what's over there? Joe, have you ever yeah. asked yourself that question? Whether or not you looked into the Antarctic Treaty or not, they will not let you, your mom, your dad, your, the richest person in the world, uh, without government clearance and you ain't getting it you ain't going to antarctica to look around and see if there's any other worlds or any other continents you ain't you're not going doesn't matter how much money you have you can't do it you can go to the peninsulas the tour guided peninsulas and go do your thing there and then go right home you can't be like hey man we're gonna go cruise around for the next year <laughs> it ain't gonna happen because well, we imagine what you would find your globe's over there's things there that would prove the globe is done it's over and here's the here's the thing we're not saying what the earth is. We're saying, Correct. you know, the earth is not. measurably, testably level and right. horizontal, yeah. right? Saying flat earth, well, what does that mean? Level and horizontal and water proves that. And we're also saying it's scientifically provably not a globe. That's mm -hmm. so, those are the claims that we're making. And 100%. now are there lands? Are there extra, extra, extra people and lands? I think so, but we just yeah. want the right to go explore, yep. right? But for some reason, they say all of this land bigger than the United States, right? And I think that's just a fraction of a fraction of a fraction of what's out there filled with resources that no human has ever set eyes upon. Um, how come Exxon Mobil isn't going, let us go out there. We'll get you 20 cent gas, right? Right? No, no one's even questioning this treaty. This treaty is because 
if we were allowed to go outside our pen, yeah. our playpen, we'd discover that we're at the center of creation. Correct. That we have great power. There is no shortages. We're not overpopulated. No, 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 David, David, no it's just to protect the penguins. It's only to protect the, the ice, penguins. And That's the, the only ice, reason the they ice. do it. You got, no, no, you need the pristine oh, ice, ice also, yeah, they say. The pristine the ice. ice. Go look at the Amazon ice. rainforest. Get back to me, Joe. Go, yeah, they don't give a shit. Down. Yeah. They care about penguins. And, and, Come on. And so once you understand why the lie, because they have us in a pen, they have us believe limiting our thoughts. You know, everything you have in your life is because of the way that you think, mm -hmm. right? You create your own world. They don't want us to know how real that is. Manifestation okay? is everything very I real. have in my world. I manifested my world mm -hmm. and I love it because I'm thinking big. I appreciate the civil discussion. You're better than many Globers. Most. I really compliment. I think you're a good guy. <laughs> yeah. Um, I just think that you're lost in space. And I was at one time. And it's no offense. And I'm hoping that one day you see that all of the stuff you brought to us is not factual. You, you brought some math to us, but you not really. You didn't show us how far the sun was. You didn't show us the radius of the earth. Show us the radius of the earth. That's the show us water bend. No, show me water bending. We'll start from at that. rest. Water at rest, bending bigger yeah. than a cup of water. Don't show us a drop of water. Yeah, show, show us like curve, anything curve, bigger curve, than a curve. gallon of water. Yeah, water curving. Water has to find and maintain its level. It has to be contained. Yep. Take your All bathtub right. away from your bath. From Joel, your, I'm going to say goodbye. I'm going to I'm going to hang up because I got to run. All okay. right, brother. All Thanks, right, David. Thanks. Reach it. Reach out again after you look a little deeper. If you want to have another conversation, um, we'll talk about it. Thanks. Okay. Sounds good. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Bye bye. I don't know if he's. I don't know if he's capable of waking up. I don't know. He's. A, I, he could be smart. I mean, he's got book smarts. Does he have common sense smarts? Well, book smarts is is heavy indoctrination, unfortunately. Um, yeah. But you know, again, just. Just the fact that he can he can break down nine eleven that there's there's something in his brain that will allow it, allow yeah. the critical thought, allow him to trust his senses because he had to have Dave he trusted his own senses with the controlled demolition we all saw it so he trusted his senses there why didn't he trust the scientists and the official narrative people and the professionals coming forward and there's full size magazines about how you know that the official story was real and that why doesn't he believe any of that he but he believes the same context the same format of where we live the people telling us where we live and in, in the in the school books it's like it's really weird usually you don't have you don't have someone act like that but uh for me at least i know you said probably not for me it's possible still i'd have to see in part two if we do a part two of them i'd have to see where his mind all is. right <laughs> Amazing. Well, All right. Well, yeah, for sure. Thanks. All right, everybody. Thanks. Thanks for joining our random, yeah. uh, random show, but uh, love you all. And um, we'll see you again, hopefully soon. So take care.